All right, that's game two. Let's hope for better in game three, or uh, we got this. One more game. What's going on guys? If you want to support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code itresolves10yp for 10% off your entire purchase. What's going on guys and welcome to the final part of this week's challenge week. That is right, we are finally going to be done with Necro Duality. We've had kind of a bad run of it. Uh, on Monday we didn't get any wins, on Wednesday we didn't get any wins. We'll see if we can get some wins today, but uh, today's deck is brought to us by Uro Band by All. Thank you so much. You submitted actually two decks, this is just one of them. Uh, and I, I think it's an interesting list, we're certainly going to give it the best shot we can. There's some things that I think don't work 100%, but that's okay. We'll talk about that. Uh, and we're just going to have a fun time regardless. Now, I do want to reiterate, next week is uh, Olivia Crimson Bride. So if you would like to build a deck for that, we've got the Discord channel open for you. You can go ahead and submit there. Uh, now, one thing to mention, next week is Thanksgiving here in the US, uh, which does mean that on like Thursday and Friday, I'll probably be spending some time with family. I'm going to try and pre-record and still get it out on time uh, for you guys, just to make sure that you guys still get some some content over the, uh, the break there for us. Uh, and I know some of you guys are international as well, so you may not celebrate Thanksgiving. So I want to do the best I can to get some content up for you guys there as well. But uh, regardless, it's going to be a fun week. Please build. Please be creative. Uh, uh, and share those deck lists but let's talk about today's deck so this is kind of a i mean it's really a three color deck it says a four color deck but that's just because yorian uh the idea here is really pretty simple there's a lot of engine pieces to this deck uh so obviously necro duality is here maskwood nexus is here these are cards that we've seen in almost every deck that we've seen so far uh to make everything a zombie essentially and so the idea is you're going to get copies of basically everything that you play the idea then from there on out is essentially to play a bunch of these little guys, bounce them with things like Teferi's Time Twist uh, or Siren's Ruse. Now, worth noting, they also count as a pirate, so you do get to draw a card off of this. So well well thought out there, Uro. Uh, and the idea is very simple. Just make a bunch of copies of creatures and hopefully win the game. Now, to help us move forward, uh, not only do we have the Ruse, which is going to help us draw some cards, but... We do have Beast Whisperer here, uh, allowing us whenever you cast a creature spell to draw a card. That's just kind of nice. Uh, we've got Yorian to bounce the whole board if we'd like. And then, of course, Thassa Deep Dwelling, which can help bounce as well. We also have the Scarab God here that's going to allow us to, to essentially replay stuff from the graveyard as a uh, four force, which is kind of nice. Uh, now, one interesting piece to this. Uh, well, I'll say two. Realm Walker is another interesting one. Uh, we do have a fairly high ish instant and sorcery count in the early slot. But other than that or other than that, wow, excuse me, uh, we mostly have creatures, which means we should be able to play free creatures off the t not free, but uh, creatures off, off of the top of our deck with Realm Walker if we do it right. Um, now, Volo, Guide to Monsters. Uro, this is an interesting one. Whenever you cast a creature spell that doesn't share a creature type with a creature or uh, a creature card in your graveyard, copy that spell. The problem we have with this is that everything has the exact same creature type because they have all creature types uh, when we have Maskwood Nexus out. Uh, so this does help us in the sense that if we don't have Maskwood Nexus, this kind of helps us do uh so some copying regardless but if maskwood nexus is out volo is essentially not going to do anything which is a little worrisome uh but that is okay the other thing i would mention is uh we don't have any basic swamps to pull with the fable passage and we do have champion of the perished as well as headless rider uh, and Scare of God, things that we're gonna need black mana for potentially even early in the game. So just some things to think about, Uro, nothing nothing crazy. I'm not trying to discourage by any means. I just wanted to point those things out as some things to maybe think about in the future. Uh, but regardless, we are gonna send this through three games. If we get any number of wins, Uro, you're gonna take the week. But if we don't, I can't in good conscience say that anybody won because all you, uh, nobody nobody really got a win. So we're hoping we can get a win today for you, Uro. We're hoping we can get somebody to win. If not, I think nobody wins challenge week, guys. I think we gotta, we gotta wish you all the best of luck next week. So let's see if we can do it. Let's jump into game one now. All right, guys, here we are for game number one. 
Uh, and it's not a great hand, but I do think we can keep it on the back of Consider with the Fable Passage and see if we can get there. Uh, one thing I also want to remind you, um, as part of these challenge weeks, you do have to follow a particular format. Uh, now, Uro, this isn't directed at you. This is actually directed at another individual, and I won't call them out, who did submit a deck, uh, but it was not historic legal. Uh, so please in the future just make sure that you're following the format it is on the challenge card that we share out each week so i just want to make sure that you guys see that uh and then of course tag it appropriately in the uh the discord channel so that way we see it and we can actually pull it for the challenge week uh looks like our opponent is really debating here on what to do i'm the more i'm looking at this the more i'm like maybe we should uh send this one back um the I'm going to I'm going to try it. We're going to be a bit aggressive on the mulligan. I honestly do like this better. We'll keep six. Uh, I'm going to throw this back and see. This is a situation where I'd love to get black with the Fable Passage, but we can't. Uh, there is no uh, swamp in the deck. Uh, and so that actually doesn't work, but that is OK. Uh, let's go ahead and do this now, though, because it doesn't matter. We don't have anything until turn three anyway. All right, let's go ahead and uh, pop that Fable Passage. We'll see what we need to get here. Uh, we'll get, really doesn't matter too much. I guess we'll get a blue source because we do have a lot more blue in the deck than anything else. So uh, I think that that's probably just the right call. All right. Um, I mean, we can just go ahead and play the Realm Walker. It's not super exciting, but we will name Zombie here. Uh, that just allows us, obviously, the play of uh, once we drop the Maskwood Nexus, we can start playing things off the top. Now, this is scary. Drana is terrifying. We obviously can't block this, otherwise we lose the Realm Walker as well. So, uh, let's do this. Um, hmm. This is all creature types. So, again, this is part of the problem with Volo is we're kind of discouraged from playing it because we've got... Uh, stuff that it's something that has all creature types essentially so we no matter what we do everything's gonna have the same creature type that doesn't really work well all right they're gonna destroy beast whisperer that's a little frustrating obviously uh, but it is what it is um, we'll do the best we can we do have a glass pool mimic I suppose uh, I'll block here oh duh uh, that's okay um, I mean, honestly, it might be for the best because now we can actually just play Volo. Uh, I'm gonna throw this out as a land. We kind of just need to need to keep moving forward here. Unfortunately, though, I think we're gonna end up uh, just getting outpowered by this nice little Orzhov Vampires list. This is a pretty sick list, by the way. Uh, I do like it quite a bit. Uh, no blocks. Um, they put a counter on each attacking creature, so we're we're pretty dead next turn. Uh, let's do this. Uh, we'll name Zombie, but again, it doesn't count for anything. Um, we'll bounce this just to draw a card, I suppose. Um, doesn't matter what we pick. Uh, yeah, all right. Unfortunately, that's a quick game one, but that is a loss. We can't block in the air, so it is what it is. Uro, we're hoping. Let's see if we can get it in game two. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. Uh, and I do think we can keep this. We've got the Watery Grave with the Consider. Uh, that also is going to help us with this, uh, the Headless Rider here. So I think that that's okay-ish to keep. Uh, the question really becomes, do we shock ourselves turn one or do we not? I'm going to because we really need to find uh, a land here. Um, we absolutely need to find a green source, worst case scenario, uh, but really any land just to get us to that Headless Rider is going to be really important. It looks like we are up against a Sliver deck. Uh, I'm going to put the Consider in the graveyard here. Perfect. All right, that's exactly what we needed. That's a start. Uh, let's drop this now. Uh, we do have another Consider, which is great, uh, but again, Volo and Maskwood Nexus just don't work well together, unfortunately, so we'll do the best we can. Uh, I'm going to decline. I want to put that in my hand. I'd love to get all the lands I can at this point. Um, uh, and we'll see what happens here. Obviously naming Sliver on the... Uh, uh, let's see. Let's drop you and let's go ahead and drop the, uh, the Headless Rider here. Uh, obviously not going to block anytime soon with this, but... Uh, next turn we get Maskwood Nexus down, which just means that any any creature essentially at that point, uh, if it dies, we actually get a 2-2, uh, which is quite nice. Um, 
Okay, they did not attack in. Uh, that's actually kind of interesting because, truthfully, <laughs> uh, not a lot we could have done about it, but that's fine. Um, all right, let's no attack, obviously. Um, they did not draw land, I don't believe, so they are kind of at a standstill. This is our chance. Uh, we've got we've got an engine kind of going here. Uh, that's a little scary. Okay, but they're still not attacking. All right. Uh, let's see. Hmm. I'm gonna pay two. I'm gonna play the champion. Uh, and I'm gonna play another headless rider. Uh, so the reason being, this now gives us essentially two tutus anytime something dies, uh, which is really good. Um, this is the scary one, the spiteful sliver, because we can't. It does. It makes it very difficult just to fight through. Um, we kind of need to kill that. Man, slivers are just so good. Uh, you can see just by drawing a land, they all of a sudden have quite a bit of stuff on the field. <laughs> Um, okay, so let's see. Um, I mean, we dropped Volo, I guess. It doesn't seem great, but it is what it is. We just have to do it. Uh, it does put a counter on the champion, which is something. Um, but again, Volo is essentially just a 3-2 for 4 in this list, uh, which is not ideal. Um, I'm very curious to see how this actually plays out. So we can start spitting things out with the Nexus here since we can't really play the other Volo anyway. Um, I'd really, really like a Necro Duality or something along those lines, but we're just not, we're not there quite yet. Uh, truth be told, uh, does this deal it the target player or Planeswalker? Uh, I guess we just don't block then. And we just take the four. We would have taken three anyway, uh, so it really wouldn't have saved us that much damage, so I don't really feel like we had to do that. Um, all right, uh, let's let's draw a card. Uh, this is kind of a nice, again, the, the Siren's Ruse is a nice little interaction. We could wait, I suppose, and try and uh, do something a little different there, but that's okay. All right drop you uh and i think we just hold up the time twist uh where we can block something and then hopefully uh time twist to exile the our creature and then reset it essentially i think that that's the best play uh okay well that's terrifying um all right <laughs> now we're probably just dead uh they can attack in with everything if they want all right i guess they don't want uh interesting okay um, let's, whoops, let's block here and let's block here. Uh, then what we are going to do is time twist on, uh, I suppose this one. Um, so this dies, but this now doesn't deal damage, which is kind of nice. So we only take three this turn. It's a nice little trick to be able to do that kind of thing. Um, but it's not necessarily amazing. Uh, and then this comes back with a 1-1 one, one counter, and then this gets stronger as well. So, I mean, that was a, a fairly solid turn in some respects. Uh, but we're kind of just getting ever closer to death. As, str as strong as we get, uh, they also get basically that strong. So it's a little, little scary. Now let's go ahead and spit out and pass. I mean, that's all we can do. Uh, they can truthfully just attack in now with... They could have done that last turn and they would have won. Um, that's fine. I can't really block with this anyway, solely because if we if we do that, uh, we die. <laughs> um, so really, they just need to attack in and they got us. Yeah. Guys, I'll be honest, the decks this, this week, I was really hoping for something a little more exciting and that's okay. Uh, I don't think you guys did a bad job or anything. I just think uh, I was hoping for a little more, that's all. Uh, let's try and kill you, I suppose. Kill you. Um, I mean, it really doesn't matter. We're, we're super dead here, but we're going to clear as much out as we can as we do this. Oh, man. There we go. We did get to kill a lot, though. Uh, that would have died as well, which is kind of nice, but... All right, that's game two. Let's hope for better in game three, or uh, we got this. One more game.
All right, guys, this is the last game for Necro Duality Challenge Week. Do we keep it? Uh, it's not ideal, but I think we'll try it. We have a turn one champion, which is nice, uh, but we don't have a follow up play. Uh, so we're we're in hoping stage. Consider it is a very helpful card, though. We should be able to get something off of that. Uh, and we'll see what happens uh, really quick, guys, as well. I just wanted to uh, let you all know before we get to the end of this video, uh, we've got these mystery packs here. Uh, they are available for purchase in our store uh, at itresolvesmtg.com. And essentially what they are, you can look at the listing and see exactly what they are. They're like $5.95 or something like that. Um, and they're basically custom packs uh, made for drafting. So the idea is not that you're going to get tons of value out of it. I'm not trying to sell these as like repacks or anything like that. Um, it's solely just stuff that I've had in my collection that I'm uh, basically pushing off and and saying I don't need it anymore. And so basically the pack structure is very similar to the mystery packs. Uh, if you've played any of or if you uh, uh, saw any of the mystery like convention boosters, things like that, essentially that's kind of what they are. Uh, they've got two cards, two commons or uncommons of each color. Uh, they've got a oh, that's mean. Uh, they've got a, a non-basic land at common or uncommon. They've got a multicolor card at uncommon or uncommon, or common or uncommon, and then a colorless card as well. Uh, and then they also do have a rare and a foil. There's no minimum value to it, but there is um, potential for good stuff, of course. But uh, that's entirely up to you guys if you want to pick those up or not. But it is, a, I think, a really, really fun way to kind of chaos draft. Um, I I love chaos drafting. I think it's really fun. Uh, and so these are just a way that you guys can do that without having to do the like the Walmart chaos drafts where it's just like a here's a battle for Zendikar pack and like that kind of stuff. Like there there's potential for cards back to fourth edition uh, is kind of the way that it works out. So there's a lot in it uh, if you want to do that. Um, obviously, you don't have to, but just just a consideration. Um, all right, well, whatever we play is basically gonna die, but I guess we could get Thassa down. Is that really that helpful? Not really. I'm gonna try and get Beast Whisperer down. I mean, this dies like very quickly uh, and Nid is just gonna come down and kill us. Um, <laughs> yep, there's the Maelstrom Pulse killing it. That makes sense. Guys, I'll be honest, this week uh, was a rough start to the to the challenge week. Necro Duality did not pan out the way I had hoped. What and, and what's kind of amazing is I did play a standard deck uh, that had Necro Duality in it. It was just a basic zombies list and it was pretty good. It was fine. Uh, so I appreciate the ambition. I appreciate the creativity. That certainly has points in my mind, but uh, unfortunately, it's not uh, it's not garnering us any wins, which is okay. We don't have to win every game, but uh, I uh, I'm kind of pinning it down to I want you guys to just try and build a good solid deck, but still have some creative elements to it. Um, we're not judging on creativity this time, of course, but uh, I I want to have some fun with it. Unfortunately, it looks like we're just gonna die. <laughs> uh, one more turn of attack from Niv Mizzet and we're dead. That's if they don't have anything else to attack in with. All right. Yeah, I mean, we're uh, <laughs> we're pretty dead here. Cool. All right. Yep. Um. <laughs> I mean, we just don't have anything. What is this? Okay. Uh, they just attack in with them, visit. I'm going to concede. Man, that's unfortunate. Oh, come on. All right. Let's talk about it. All right. So officially nobody won. Uh, we didn't get a single win with any of our decks this week, which is really unfortunate. Uro, I'm very sorry. Unfortunately, you didn't get any either. Uh, I was hoping for better guys. I'll be honest. I do appreciate again. I do want to say I appreciate the creativity because I think you guys really thought some of these things through. But uh, as an example here, like test your decks a little bit, because I do think there's some interactions that um, especially in this deck that we played today uh, that kind of negate each other if you don't play it out and just not that you're going to know right off the bat. It's just you got to play it out, test it a little bit and see what you come up with. I encourage you guys to do so. 
Uh, and I do encourage you guys to keep building and be creative because I'd rather a creative deck that doesn't win. Um, but I do want to encourage you guys to think about the, the environment as well. So uh, I wish you guys the best of luck for next week. Please, please, please do the best you can. Make a, a creative deck that can also do some fun stuff and win. Uh, that is the goal. So good luck to you guys. I hope to, uh, to see some awesome stuff from you. And I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. I love you all. Thank you so much for participating. Again, check out our store for those mystery draft packs if you're interested. Don't feel like you have to. It's just a cool little thing. Thing that I thought I'd give a shot to so we'll see if it works but love you guys have a good weekend I'll see you again very soon